Hello everyone, you are on Fitness Logic Radio. I am your host, Nevin Barnett, and today I'm super excited to have Greg Knuckles on the show. I have been following Greg's work for close to a decade now, and it's really someone I look up to in the fitness industry. We speak about cooking, which is essential for achieving your physique goals, about his new application, Macro Factor, about eccentric training, about his strength goals in relationship to his weight cut, and much more. I had such a good time speaking with Greg that I am sure you will absolutely love this episode and gain some knowledge that will help you in your endeavors. On this podcast, I guide you out of frustration by explaining how your body actually works so you can get and live in the body you've always dreamed of. Enjoy. I, I think everyone who goes on a kind of a diet, we're always trying to make stuff that we like, but with a, you know, calorie mm-hmm. friendly approach and macronutrient breakdown approach. And it's funny because being in the kitchen myself a lot, because I actually enjoy cooking. So I'm always super excited when you're sharing tips about cooking because you actually know your way around the kitchen. And it's it's funny because a lot of people use whey protein and they don't realize mm-hmm. that you have so much more flexibility in using either a combination of whey and uh, casein or just casein be- depending on what you're trying to achieve. But yeah, the, 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 the final result between whey and casein is completely different and you can't really use them in the same way. I think for dry, like if you're replacing flour, whey is interesting. If you want to get a bit more moist, and a bit more, yeah, closer to something that is actually more enjoyable most of the time, but it gets sticky and everything. So it's, yeah. it's a trade-off. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think that casein works a lot better for most baking applications, just because, uh, I should know the science of this. I don't, <laughs> I don't really care that much. Um, but, but when you heat whey, it has a tendency to go grainy. Um, and, and I also just think plain whey has a somewhat offensive flavor. Like, it's, it's not that bad, but it's not great, and you've got to do more work to cover it up. Uh, casein hydrates really, really well, yeah. and it will maintain a more tender texture when it's cooked uh, and hold on to water really well. So if you're trying to make some sort of relatively moist baked good, um, casein behaves really well. You did have a post uh, about injuries, I think, in 2012 that I found, or 2013, mm-hmm. with already a pretty impressive list of injuries. So I was like, oh, wow. So he did get injured. Uh, so my question is, uh, are these injuries mostly related to strength training, or are they, or did you mostly uh, hurt yourself during your football career and everything and and they translated after in your lifting career and can you get strong without getting (laughs) injured that's that's kind of my question so in in the long list of physical limitations i have (laughs) uh yeah really really i guess only the back was a lifting related issue um so actually i i can answer the first question for or the second question first can you get strong without getting injured Theoretically, I'm sure uh, it's I'm sure it's happened to people before. Uh, in practice, I think I think most lifters are at least a little dinged up most of the time. Um, there was a study out of I think it was Norway. It was somewhere in Scandinavia. I think the lead author was Ekblom, if memory serves. Um, but they they were looking at competitive power lifters um, and both how many of them reported an injury at the moment in time that they were filling out a survey, like the survey, and how many of them had sustained an injury within the last year. What are the subjects that you wish we... Because you've been in the field of training and nutrition for a few years, and Mm -hmm. how it goes is that you don't get so surprised by any new studies because it's usually something that confirms your current beliefs and everything but have you been surprised by any studies lately something that has you know tilted your interest and being like oh that's interesting it kind of like uh it, it's a bit of dissonant uh, cognitive dissonance with uh, what i have in in my brain um you know I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you the last thing that really surprised me and that is um 
the red light therapy research. So I, I'd been getting Facebook ads for like you red can, light therapy devices. You can for, actually see it here. Just a. Uh, oh, you you have one? Yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd been getting ads for red light therapy devices for like five years on Facebook, and it just it just set off my bullshit alarm. I just assumed that it was completely worthless. Bullshit. <laughs> and then uh, a, a red light therapy um, study came up in the Mass Journal sweep. I, I think it was looking at like recovery after resistance training or recovery between sets and like uh, multi set volume tolerance. One of the two. But I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll I'll take a peek at this, uh, see what it looks like, and uh, it, it had pretty positive results. So I wanted to see, like, well, okay, is this a situation where it's just like one lab getting positive results, where maybe they're getting some funding from a company that makes this particular device? Don't you think you have a slight bias in thinking if I'm losing weight, I'm losing strength in a, in a sense, or I'm going to be not as strong? No, not really. Um, so I, I think for me, like, and so I, I don't really make that connection in my head so much, I suppose. For me, honestly, um, a, a lot of it just comes down to like mechanics. So as I mentioned, yeah. I, I bench reverse grip and that's man, dude, re- <laughs> no, it's, it's, the only belly dominant bench press. So the thing about reverse the thing about reverse grip is you can touch it way lower than you can a pronated grip. Like I, I touch it I touch my pronated grip bench press somewhere in the neighborhood of my xiphoid process, maybe like an inch below, something like that. I mean, when my reverse grip form is really dialed in and I've got a great bloat going, uh I'm touching the bar maybe like three inches away from my belly button. And so, <laughs> dude, losing weight is gaining range of motion in the True. reverse grip bench press. And I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't think weight affects my pronated grip bench press as much. But I kind of I kind of think that if I'm going to hit 500, it's going to be reverse grip. And uh, th- that's a different animal at 200 than it is at 250, 260. Uh, and, and for the squat... A lot of it's just control, man. Um, like if if you get if you have somewhere, I mean, even at this point, like I, I've squatted seven sixty five, but for me, if I get north of six fifty, um, it it scares me a little bit from a control perspective. Yeah, like the if you miss groove it or the like the bar whips in just the wrong way, you can lose it in an instant. And the more you weigh, the more counterbalance you have against that. Like the the more inertia your body has to kind of protect yourself against the vicissitudes of the bar. If you want to listen to the rest of this amazing conversation, just go to your usual podcast platform. All the links to listen to Fitness Logic Radio are available just below.